AQA, A level physics, engineering, uh, and this is about rotational kinetic energy. And this is the bit of the specification we're going to be looking at in this video. So, all of these objects have rotational kinetic energy. So, there's a spinning top, there's the ice skater spinning round, uh, these things called spinners. Uh, kids were crazy about a few years ago. Uh, the wheel on a grinding machine. Um, this bit of an engine, this bit of an old steam engine, there's a massive flywheel which has rotational kinetic energy. At the fun fair, all kinds of rides spinning around. So things which are rotating have rotating kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy. It may also have linear kinetic energy, which is what we've done in the past, but this is rotational Ke. Now, pretty simple to derive an expression for it. Uh, look at all these masses going round in a circle, and the kinetic energy of each mass, m, is a half mv squared. Now, if we substitute v equals omega r, which you did from circular motion, uh, you'll see that we get something which is equal to a half i omega squared. Now, that's for a single mass, so an object can be made up of lots and lots of masses, point masses, so the kinetic energy is a half sigma mr squared times omega squared, or just a half i omega squared. I don't think you'll be asked to derive that. I've not seen a derivation of it on an exam question, but kinetic energy is a half i omega squared, not a half mv squared, but a half i omega squared. Let's talk about flywheels. Flywheels can be used to store kinetic energy. Uh, there are various kind of, um, like solar power only works during the day. Wind power only works when it's windy. So you need some way of stabilizing the energy supply. And this Dutch power plant uses six very large flywheels. Uh, and when supply is bigger than demand, uh, they accelerate the flywheels. And when demand gets bigger, they actually convert this. They are connected to motors and generators. So large flywheels can be used to stabilize the energy supply. Uh, Formula One cars use flywheels. It's a system called KERS, uh, if you're into Formula One. Uh, and basically, when the car breaks, uh, the energy, some of that energy is stored in a flywheel. And then when you come round the corner, that energy can be used to kind of vomf, rapid acceleration. And that's an example of a, a flywheel storing energy. Um, now, the efficiency of this system, obviously, it depends on the amount of friction. And we're talking at a frictional torque. These flywheels will be, they'll be on a shaft and that shaft is supported by bearings. And there's nearly always friction at bearings, a frictional torque. Uh, and so every time it spins round, you'll be losing energy due to friction. Um, now, uh, this flywheel apparently has been developed by NASA for storing energy on spacecraft. And inside this container, uh, there's a flywheel whizzing round. It's in a vacuum chamber, so there's no air resistance, and it's supported by magnetic bearings. So this is incredibly efficient, uh, and it's a, a way of storing kinetic energy, uh, storing energy on a spacecraft. Here's a little sum for you to do. This metal hoop has a moment of inertia of 180 kilogram meters squared. Okay, if you imagine this large metal ring, it's with a radius of about a meter, something that you might f have found on a very large steam engine in the past. Okay, uh, a mass, when I worked it out, a mass of about 200 kilograms. So a big, heavy hoop flywheel. How much kinetic energy does it store 
when rotating at 100 pi radians per second about its central axis. Work it out. The answer is in 3, 2, 1. There you go, about 8.88 .88 megajoules. A lot of kinetic energy. Now, another use for flywheels. Uh, going back to this old steam engine, now, as the, the piston goes in and out, uh, and there's different, we'll talk about heat engines later, uh, but the motion of this, mater this machinery can be very jerky. So there's like a, what we call the power stroke. Uh, and then, you know, there's, uh, we'll talk about these cycles later on, but it's not smooth. Uh, and it could involve very rapid changes in the angular velocity and in the torque that you get. So these rapid changes, the syllabus says in speed and torque. Now, if you've got a very large flywheel uh, with a large moment of inertia, it will smooth out this motion and make it a lot less jerky. In this simple engine, uh, it ensures that the motion continues as well uh, after the power stroke. Uh, there's, there's different kind of bits of the engine cycle. One of them is the power stroke where it actually pushes and produces the torque. And then other things have to happen after that, like exhaust and compression and things. Uh, and basically you need to go through the cycle and the flywheel will make sure that you get to all the way round back to the next power stroke. So it smooths out the motion, it smooths out the torque that you get, and it makes sure that the cycle continues. I found this animation of a, a four stroke engine. I thought it was dead good, so I put, put it in the video. Uh, and you'll see that there's a flywheel doing the same job here. Without it, these explosions, bang, 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 Without it, the angular velocity and the torque delivered would not be smooth. It would be very jerky. So the flywheel makes, smooths out the torque and it also makes sure that you get to the next power stroke. 